Hello my dear students, very good morning to all of you in your physics class. And in this lecture we are talking about the rotational motion. If we are applying a force to any body, so what are the condition that the body will rotate? First condition is that force should be tangential, it will not pass through the center of mass. Let us consider, it is a rigid body. Okay. It is a rigid body, let us consider a rigid body and this rigid body can rotate freely, can rotate freely about this axis of rotation and we are applying a tangential force F which is not passing to the center of mass. This point is very, very important. When we are applying any kind of force which is not passing through the center of mass, then only body will perform rotational motion. Okay. So, this force is not passing through the center of mass and this body can freely rotate about the axis passing to the center of mass, it is the radial distance r, it is the radial distance r. Okay. So, the torque if you talk about the torque it is equal to r into f into sin theta and in this case we are taking theta is equal to 90 degree. In rotational motion and rotational motion, how we can find angular acceleration, how we can find angular acceleration. So, let us see the torque is equal to R f sin theta and theta in this case is 90 degree. So, tau is equal to R into f which is equal to I into alpha, I is the moment of inertia and alpha is the angular acceleration. So, this relation is very, very important this relation is very very this r is the perpendicular distance we can write. This relation is very very important whenever we want to find alpha. Whenever we want to find alpha this relation is very important like, like let us consider this pain is vertical right now it is vertical and if we release this pain from this vertical position it will rotate about the lower end which is at the floor which is, which is at the surface, this pane is rotating. So, what, what is the reason of rotation of this pane? Its weight, its weight which is acting at the center of mass of this pane is providing torque about this lower end. Okay, let us see. Okay. Let us consider a rod which is vertical initially placed vertically and if we release, if we release this rod having mass m, it will rotate like that about this end A. Okay? I am taking example. Now, if this rod is at angle theta with vertical, then the mg which is vertically downward will provide, will provide the torque. We have to find the angular acceleration. Find angular acceleration of rod of rod at angle theta with vertical with vertical so by this example we can understand how we can use this formula okay so in this case this mg is providing torque is providing torque about end A, about end A. So, what is the perpendicular distance of this mg from this end A? Since this total length is L, it is the center of mass. So, this length will be L by 2 and this angle should be theta. So, this perpendicular distance R of mg from this point A is equal to L by 2 sin theta. Okay. So, now torque will be torque will be force mg into perpendicular distance L by 2 sin theta is equal to I into alpha. Now, what is the moment of inertia of this rod? What is the moment of inertia about this, uh, of this rod about its end? Okay. So, this I is equal to m l square by 3 in this case. 
it is ml square by 3 in this case already we have covered in last lecture. So, this mg l sin theta divided by 2 is equal to ml square by 3 into alpha ok. M will cancel out one L also cancel out and alpha is equal to 3 by 2 G by L sin theta. It is the alpha. So, by this concept we can easily understand how we can find angular acceleration of rotating body ok. So, to find the rotational uh, the angular acceleration we can use this expression very important concept. If you are understanding this concept, we can understand so many kind of rotational motion ok. First we have to find the force, the force which is responsible for the torque ok. Since all forces are not responsible for the torque, force which is tangential ok, which is not passing to the center of mass are responsible for the center of mass and for the rotation. Any kind of force we apply on any body then it may be possible body will rotate ok. So, we are taking some example like <coughs> what we are doing by some support some kind of support we are hanging a rod horizontally using two string ok horizontally using two strings. Now, if one string is cut then this rod will rotate about this end A. If we are cutting this string which is connected to the B, this rod will rotate about this end A. Now, we have to find the angular acceleration of rod when, when this string is cut just after cutting this string. So, find, find angular acceleration angular acceleration of rod when sorry just after just after a string cut ok this is string cut ok. So, when this string cut which force is responsible for the rotation of this rod? It is the weight of the rod. So, this weight is acting vertically downward at the center of mass. This weight is acting vertically downward at the center of mass, ok. And from this point of rotation, it is the axis of rotation which is perpendicular to this plane and passing through end ok. About this end, this axis this rod will rotate ok. So, what is the perpendicular distance of this A and Mg between this A and Mg ok, it is the L by 2. So, force is Mg we know very well F into R is equal to I into alpha. So, mg into L by 2 what is I? I about this end I about end one end of rod is m L square by 3. So, it is m L square by 3 into alpha this m m will cancel out one L again cancel out finally, we are getting 3 g by 2 L 3 G by 2 L. It is the angular acceleration of this rod when this string which is connected to the B is cut ok. Now, one very interesting concept related to this angular acceleration and related to the linear acceleration of different points of rod ok. The relation between the relation between linear acceleration linear acceleration and angular acceleration angular acceleration what is the relation 
it is angular acceleration vector is equal to alpha vector cross r vector ok. This concept we have covered in our circular motion. The, ang the linear acceleration of the particle is the cross product of angular acceleration and radial vector ok. Now, if r the, the theta is 90 degree. So, what we can write alpha into r acceleration a is equal to alpha into r ok. And if this rod is rotating then angular acceleration of each point angular acceleration of each point is equal is same for the rod total rod, but the linear acceleration having different distance for, for this point a the radial distance is l for this point center of mass c the radial distance is l by 2. So, if you are talking about sorry if you are talking about the acceleration of point b it is the alpha into radius radial distance of b ok. So, the acceleration of b the linear acceleration of b is alpha what is the alpha it is 3 g by 2 l which is same for each point and this distance of b from the axis of rotation is l. So, this l will cancel out and acceleration of b we are getting 3 g by 2. Same as it is if we talk about the acceleration of c center of mass. So, acceleration of c is equal to alpha into distance of c from the axis of rotation. So, alpha acceleration of linear acceleration of c is equal to 3 g by 2 l into l by 2 l l will cancel out it will become 3 g by 4. So, as we are moving from one end to the axis of rotation this linear acceleration will decrease. A point which is at largest distance which is at largest distance from the axis of rotation having largest acceleration linear acceleration. So, this concept of angular acceleration and linear acceleration and relation between these two how we can find acceleration of different part different particles different points of any rigid body we can understand using this example ok. Thank you very much.